Okay, so it's time to start now. Is my voice clear? Okay. So uh, welcome everyone, and thank you for joining Mercury's online event, The Reality of Engineers Working in Diverse Work Styles. Uh, nice to meet you. I'm Yasu from Mercury's engineering office, hosting as today's main MC. This event comes from a series of events called An Autonomy of Mercury Engineering Organization, which introduces the backstage of Mercury's working environment. Today's topic is remote working, which has recently been hot to talk about. Hope you enjoy all of these. Uh, next slide, slide please. Uh, maybe next one, thank you. So the timetable will be as displayed. We will have three talks on remote working experience from each engineer and engineering manager, followed by a panel discussion, and lastly, Q&A session. Closing, uh, closing is expected to be around 20 hundred, so stay tuned until then. Next slide, please. So a few announcements to make for this event. The event will be recorded and archived on our YouTube channel, Mercury Dev JP. The link will be shared after the event has finished, so you may freely come in and out during the event. Uh, also for Twitter, our event hashtag will be hashtag Mercury underscore dev. Please use this hashtag in case of tweeting on Twitter. And also, this event is super casual, so relax and listen to the talks while eating and drinking. So today I have my nice cup, oh, nice cup made of uh, soil, and I have some kind of strawberry tea over here as well. So enjoy yourself as well. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. Uh, lastly, you can use the chat box on YouTube to reach out, reach us out. Don't hesitate to comment or ask questions whenever it comes up in your mind. Type it in, and we will try to cover as many questions as possible at the very end of the session. Tweeting the question is also welcome too. So that's all for the announcement. So and let's get started. The first talk is how to manage a team work on a fully remote by Eric Spitzer. Eric San, the floor is yours. OK, can you hear me now? Perfect, it looks like. So at least I hope everybody can hear me now. Um, so um, I will talk a little bit on how to manage a fully remote team. And um, coming to the more boring part, um, small self-introduction. So my name is Eric. Um, as you probably guessed based on my accent, I'm from Germany. Um, I worked in different kind of techs. I actually didn't start as an iOS engineer. I worked as a Windows phone. Um, application developer. I think most of the people doesn't even remember what a Windows phone is, but that's how I started. I'm kind of on and off in Japan since 2012. There was a small break when I went to the US and also went to Portugal for some time. But the majority of the last decade, I would say I was spending in Japan. And also the, the majority of the last decade, I was um, in team management roles. Um, I have a couple of hobbies, none I'm really good at, but um, that's also not too important. Um, to because we only have eight minutes to directly jump into this topic. So I I was joining Mercury basically right in front of this COVID-19 pandemic. So I, I actually only spent three months in the actual office in Mercury. And um, so after three months after I joined, we went into kind of a fully remote um, model. And at that time, I had like three different kind of main cases, I would say. So of course, I had an existing team which were um, already existing before the COVID-19 pandemic. So they worked together for quite some time um, in the office before, um, and then went fully remote. Um, I had a team which we were scaled up during the COVID-19 um, pandemic. So basically it was an existing team and we added three additional people into that team while in a fully complete um, remote situation. And one thing um, which we just recently did, we basically built a, um, a complete new team. Um, so it's completely from scratch, um, was a completely new topic for the company. Um, so all these kind of um, cases were slightly different, but they had a little bit in common. And this is what I, I want to mainly focus in on a little bit. Um, the main thing is, and um, I personally realized is that actually managing a remote team 
is actually not too different to managing a normal team. So everything which we already knew, which is important um, to have a high functional and healthy team is, if anything, even more important in managing a remote team. So everything which is written on here is not groundbreaking. We know that it's important to have a, a proper vision and mission, have a common understanding of goals between these teams, um, also proper way on achieving these goals. Like it can be development processes, team principles. Um, of course, onboarding is a big topic. I will not really touch on because um, I think we have a session afterwards on that. Um, and trust, and that will be another topic I will touch a little bit more in details. Um, one thing, though, which for me was, and I'm personally kind of guilty on that, is um, the topic of work-life balance. So based on my experience and what, what I also saw in different kind of teams, it's, it's way easier to overwork in a remote setup because you don't have that kind of physical separation anymore between that's the place where I'm working. If I'm coming home, I stop working. So I myself, I'm sometimes guilty, and I know a lot of people are guilty on that. You just have an idea and just, okay, let me work for that like another two hours. And so it's, it's very easy to overwork. Um, that's the point here. But everything else is actually more or less the same. Um, of course, there's some smaller changes. And so one thing which in a remote setup you're lacking is what I like to call like nonverbal communication. So what I mean with nonverbal communication is just looking to your neighbor or somebody sitting in close proximity and just asking, what are you doing? Um, can I help you with something? Or you just basically by looking at them, you feel if they're struggling with something, if they're thinking about something. So that kind of nonverbal communication um, in a very casual manner is kind of missing. And this is also why I believe like um, increasing communication is pretty important um, to keep that alive. Um, one important distinguish I want to make here is more and we did this mistake. Uh, more communication doesn't mean more stand-ups or more process rituals, or it definitely doesn't mean more meetings. Because honestly, the only thing which is more exhausting than a meeting is a remote meeting, um, and it also definitely doesn't mean more reporting. So, but what it means is um, to create more transparency and visibility for all team members what everybody is doing. Um, um, the good thing is. I think as software engineers, um, we have a lot of tools already in place and a lot of process we any are used to, um, which is aid for this kind of async communication, like peer reviews, um, having like more like trunk-based development, like smaller and more frequent changes, um, writing proper commit messages. Some of my teams are really like in pair programming. So it doesn't really, um, it's too important how, but I think the important part is to share more frequently. So basically that kind of feedback culture, share more frequently, get feedback, because you just don't have that kind of, um, as I meant, like that kind of verbal communicate and uh, non-verbal communication. Um, and the, um, it's more difficult to ask also for help because um, it's, it's just more time consuming to send a Slack message. So I have a problem. And it's also like, it's for some people, it's also more difficult. So to increase that kind of transparency helps definitely. Um, and it's, from my experience, very important. Um, and that leads me to my last topic is um, it's trust. Because um, one thing I also, again, myself to a certain extent guilty on that, but also what I'm seeing quite a lot is so that kind of increase of transparency and more often sharing is not meant to, um, to micromanage or to over control. And that's also not only limited to EMs, managers, or like tech leads, I think it's in general. So this increased transparency is not supposed, supposed to control each other. It's supposed to um, um, increase our capabilities to help each other, to unblock each other, to have, because it's incredibly easy in an isolated environment of your home. Um, you're facing a problem and you feel, okay, let me solve that by myself. And you're just basically getting stuck and stuck and going more deeper into that rabbit hole. Um, and it's, you spend maybe a lot of time in solving a problem, which could be just solved by getting feedback from other people. Um, and that's probably depending on person to person. Some people are more open to actively ask for help if they're getting stuck. Some people are getting stuck more longer. But so this is again, where this kind of transparency, more often sharing that kind of increase of communication definitely helps. But again, if you don't have trust, it could easily also go into the other direction and over controlling. And 
maybe micromanaging from a manager point of um, perspective. But that's not the purpose of that. Um, but again, to not fall into that kind of pitfalls, it's important to have trust in the team. Um, so yeah, um, that was um, my eight minutes. I, I think I have only 10 seconds left. But so the main point, um, just to repeat myself is, um, managing a remote team is basically just managing a team. Everything which we know which is important is just even more important. Um, and trust, I think, if anything, trust is the most important part in that respect. Okay, thank you very much, Eric San, for your presentation. Uh, coming up next, next talk is Online Onboarding and Online Team Building by Anthony Fiane Eve. So, okay, Anthony San, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much. So, I will do a small introduction first. My name is Anthony Chan Yves. I'm from France. My first position in Paris as backend engineers, working on Java. I moved to Japan 2016, joined Mercury 2018 as a front end engineer and Scrum Master. And I became EM, engineering manager, uh, for one year and a half now. My hobby is board games and miniature uh, painting. So today I will talk more about online onboarding and online team building. And my first talk will be on uh, online onboarding. OK, uh, first, why onboarding is important? I think onboarding is really important for a new employee because we kind of set uh, this employee on the right path from the beginning. And we need for this to provide him knowledge about the team process, the product, the company. Uh, we need to help him to build relationship with team members and to build trust with the manager and the other team members. If we have these conditions, it can, this new employee can really perform at best. So at Mercury, this is really important. Uh, we're caring about uh, the onboarding experience. We're trying to improve it all the time. We still have some issues about this, but um, I think we're going in the right direction. Um, OK. How to onboard someone online? Uh, basically, I think we need three, uh, four things. First, uh, having a process for the onboarding. It will be more or less the same as a face-to-face -face onboarding. We need an available mentor. This is really important. So because online means everybody is at home or in remote position. So the mentor we should be available and can be reached anytime. We need written documentation because uh, remote work is really asynchronous and building relationship. OK, so at Mercury, we have three phases uh, for the online onboarding. First is before you join the company, we're going to uh, provide you a computer. Uh, we're going to um, uh, have some casual talk with you to see if you're matching with the right team. And you can have many casual talk to find this. On the day you're going to join, we have onboarding meetings where we're going to provide you general information about the company, about the process in the company. We're going to set up your computer, verify the access you have. And then on this, after these days of onboarding, uh, when you're going to join a team, uh, we're going to set with you some one-on-one -on -one meeting. So to know your mentor, to your manager, and to uh, have you in all team meetings. So you can feel uh, really included in the team. Next, the mentoring. So I think this is very important part of the online boarding because uh, the mentor should be available. We should be able uh, to reach him in many ways. Uh, I think it's really good things to uh, daily have a one-on-one -on -one with the mentor uh, you can share, you can discuss. Uh, it can, you can be very lonely at the beginning because you know nobody's. So having this direct interaction, I think can really help uh, a new employee to, uh, to really perform well in the company and to unblock, unblock any uh, small issue you have um, about uh, your current task. So this is the initial part. After the... Um, I mean, the another part I would like to talk is the building relationships. 
So this is also something really uh, important and the mentor should help building this relationship to help you to do your networking in the company, to connect you with the right people so to achieve your task. So building a relationship is part of that. And as I said, you need touch point with your mentor, touch point with your team, so you can share. It can be different way online. Uh, I mean, in a meeting, it could be on uh, by uh, uh, written communication, uh, many things how you can do this. And um, something else important is organizing team building to not only, only have tasks to discuss uh, with your team and work, but also to know a bit more your team members from a more personal level. And this can really help a new employee to uh, perform at best. So this brings me to the online team building. So online team building, um, probably have some tips around this. Uh, of course, uh, facilitator is very important It's online. We need someone who can smooth the meeting. Uh, something maybe of use is speaking one person at a time because uh, you cannot have the direction of the sound. So that means this is really difficult if everybody talk at the same time. So really need to set this and to be a bit straight on that to have a good team building. Adapt your team building with uh, the number of participants. So if too many participants in the team building, probably you should divide by groups because probably a lot of participants won't be able to speak in the team building and prepare some activities and topics because it's not like face-to-face -face where it's easy to have casual chat. Uh, it's good to have some topics. You can just uh, go through it and uh, support the team building. At Mercury, we have different kinds of team buildings. Uh, we have lunch and casual talk, and we can have some reimbursement. We have some workshop trainings, brainstorming. And we also have some entertainment. We have clubs uh, who organize some kind of event or team building people enjoy and just start uh, knowing each other. So this is all about my talk about online team building and online onboarding. And I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Anthony San for your presentation. Uh, just letting the, all the audiences know over here that after this presentation, uh, we we will be uh, handling all, sorry, not after this presentation, at the at last uh, session, we will be handling the questions. So feel free to post on the YouTube chat anytime you want to. Okay, so coming up, coming up next is uh, about Hokkaido workation, work plus vacation work style by Mustafa Balbaki. So Mustafa-san, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. All right, everyone. Hello, my name is Mustafa, and I'm an engineering manager at Mercari. I'm originally from Lebanon. It's a very small country in the Middle East. Uh, I currently live and work in Hokkaido. And like today in this presentation, I will share with you the story, uh, how I ended up in Hokkaido and about my work style in Hokkaido recently. So just a quick introduction. As I mentioned, I'm engineering manager at Mercari. I'm as, uh, initially, I'm self-taught uh, iOS software engineer. I work on many different apps throughout my career. And I developed apps for, on iOS for almost 10 years. Uh, I was a development instructor as well, and a mentor, and um, uh, other, other things as well here. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, I have so many hobbies, but I guess the I, from aviation to skydiving to playing the piano, but the most important hobby I picked up in Japan recently was skiing, which yeah changed a lot in my life right now. So I'll come back to skiing later on in this presentation. Uh, I joined Mercury on August 16, 2018, and uh, two years later I became EM. So it's been like almost one year as an engineering manager at Mercury. Uh, I moved in uh, August 2018, and uh, initially, when I first moved to Japan, I um, joined Mercari, and then the, uh, I joined the office, of course. Uh, that was pre-pandemic days, and the office was so much fun. We used to have a, 
like physical team buildings together and uh, the view from the office is just fantastic. And it made sense for me to, uh, at that time, to live just right next to the office so I can commute easily to the office. So I lived in Azabu Juban for three years, including one pandemic year. And that pandemic year was very difficult. Imagine living in a very small apartment like this one. That's, that's like, you see in this picture, that's like my whole apartment. I was a very difficult during the pandemic year. And um, uh, yeah, this is very, very, that's, or the whole apartment as you see. And then on September 2021, last year, Mercury announced the Your Choice policy. And Your Choice policy was the policy that changed my life. It was a like life-changing announcement for me. And that the moment Mercury announced that I started looking for houses in Hokkaido and to move to Hokkaido. So I decided to pack my things and, and move to Hokkaido. So I just like emptied everything and took the Shinkansen and went to Hokkaido. I, I bought a house in Hokkaido in Niseko in a small town called Kimibetsu. And uh, uh, also like when I was buying the house, I got the subsidy from the Kimibetsu town. The reason is many small towns in Japan, they're trying to promoting people to move to the town so that the town can uh, uh, become better economically and, and things like that. This is the town and uh, it's surrounded by nature. It's amazing. This is my house. And uh, yeah, so I had so many challenges along the way to move to Hokkaido. And uh, one of them is, of course, searching for a house is very difficult, finding a house and then moving from Tokyo to Hokkaido, the actual logistical part of like moving and shipping your items and then like changing your address and everything like it's, it, it, it was a big, very big move for me. And then getting a driving license, it's very difficult in, in Japan. And uh, yeah, uh, buying a car, the process is very complicated. I, I was able to do it. And then, yeah, of course, setting up the new house and, and things like that. So I just want to talk a little bit about the advantages of living in, in a house, a separate house in Hokkaido outside of Tokyo. It's a better quality of life. It's a bigger, more comfortable space. I can have a, a, a separation of home and, and uh, living. And then I can save on rent, of course. It's uh, affordable life here in Hokkaido. It gives, for me, it gives me mental stability, peace of mind. And like it just opens up creative opportunities when you're just surrounded by nature. Uh, so what is my work and life like in Hokkaido? Basically, I can ski every day if I want to. So I, I wake up in the morning, I go, it's just the ski resort is only seven minutes away from my house. I go for a couple of hours of skiing, then come back home and then start my first meeting. For me, I, I think about it as like skiing is more like uh, jogging in the morning, like daily skiing. I, I, I do it at, at this point, which is something that you can't do in Tokyo at all. Like the, in Tokyo, the nearest ski resort is like five minute, five hours away from, 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 from you. So uh, uh, the food is incredible in Hokkaido, of course, like the seafood is just amazing. So it's, uh, yeah, the quality of food is just on a different level. Uh, uh, yeah, so the advantages is you have a big comfortable living space and the separation of uh, of uh, work and the living living space as well. So uh, uh, I just want to say that the uh, the the move to Hokkaido, like it it's um, it was so difficult, but for me it was so much worth it and. Um, I've been here for almost uh, a month and a half now. So uh, yeah, as um, I'm, I'm still new. So I, what, I'm, what I'm sharing right now is just like um, initial reactions, but so far I'm, I'm, it's uh, for me personally, it's the best de decision I've have ever done. And uh, yeah, so uh, I think the most important like advantage for me was especially for working style is just to have this separation of of living and and workspace where where I can have a separate room just for work and then I can disconnect and come back to the living 
space, which is something that I couldn't have in Tokyo. It was just impossible because my bed and my desk and my living area was just in one room. And that, that was the, the, the case in, 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 in Tokyo. Uh, that's it for my presentation. So thank you, everyone, for listening today. And yeah, that, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Mustafa san. Uh, you're making myself envy as well for your situation over there. Okay, so that's all for the presentation. And now we will be moving on to the panel discussion. From here, uh, I will hand over the MC to Stefan san. So please, Stefan san, are you ready over there? Hi, let's do it. Okay. Good evening, everyone. My name is uh, Stefan. Very, very, very quick uh, introduction. I'm from France. I joined Medicali two years ago, and I came in Japan almost 10 years ago. I am also uh, an engineering manager at Medicali. Yes, one more of those. I'm sorry. Uh, and I'm going to animate this uh, panel discussion. So we have 15 minutes together. Uh, let's, uh, let's have some nice talk. So before I move forward, uh, let me introduce uh, your choice, which is um basically what uh, we've have been talking about uh, this entire evening so you you heard your choice there and here and it's basically what thanks to what uh, all these things are possible such as the workation in Hokkaido. so um so let me yeah, give you a brief introduction to what it is so next slide okay so what is your choice so very short. Do you like working from home or do you prefer working in the office? Uh, I don't know about you, but I've seen both profiles basically. With your cho your choice is basically you decide. It's your choice to whether either you want to work at home or work in the office. It's kind of the idea. So let, let's go into the, the highlights of it a bit. Next slide. So um, basically, you can visit the office as often as you want and at your own pace. There's nothing in force. As often also means zero. You don't have to come to the office, but you can come every day if you want to. That's completely OK. The thing that's also very good is you can work from anywhere in Japan. So for, in, for instance, uh, Mustafa was working, is currently working from Hokkaido. So anyone at Medicali can do that at the moment. And managers can only recommend you to come to the office, but they cannot enforce that. It's not an authority they have. So it is 100% your choice to basically work uh, at home or in the office. Uh, next slide. So uh, what are the objectives? Why are we doing that? It's a good question to ask, right? So first of all, we want to adopt the work style of uh, people to maximize the performance. But not only, we also want, to, we also want um, employees to basically be able to adapt their work style to what works best for them personally. Uh, and the goal is just to create a win-win uh, situation for both the company and the employees. Next slide. So now the background. So where did we come from? So obviously, as you all, we all know, we are still living through a pandemic at the moment. Uh, it started uh, around February 2020 in Japan. And so medically started to uh, ask everyone to work from home on February the 19th in order to uh, react to this pandemic, basically. Uh, after a little while, things calmed down a little, and uh, many, many companies started to call back their employees to the office. So Medicali started a trial in uh, July the 1st of 2020 in order to collect data about uh, how people feel about working from home or working from the office, etc. So we had this hybrid situation where people were basically free to do whatever they wanted. Next slide. And so, yes, the, the goal was to basically collect data in order to analyze what are the pros and the cons of both working from home and working from the office. Um, and Medicali decided to go for flexibility uh, and let people do whatever they want instead of just enforce one single, so one size fits all policy uh, that anyone has to stick with. And that's how Yuchos was born on September the 1st of 2021. Next slide. So now it's done. Uh, we're good for uh, the presentation of your choice. The goal of this, uh, this session is, uh, is a discussion. So I'm going to ask a few questions, and I'm going to call out some of the participants uh, to know what they, uh, what they feel 
about all that. So my first question to all the participants we have, and we have a few of them showing up right now, is so what do you guys think? Like, how did your choice change your life? Like, for instance, what can you do now, thanks to your choice, that you were not able to do before? Anyone wants to take a shot on this question? Come on, don't be shy. Uh, ah. <laughs> you can work with your family, like you can stay with your family now, and you can eat family cooked food, like you don't need to go to restaurants for food. Mm. Also, like if there is an emergency, you don't need to like worry too much, and you can just stay with your family while working. Nice, nice, and eating family food. We all know it's delicious, so it's very important, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Manoj. Uh, Anthony, what about you? Mm, for me, it's more managing my schedule. Uh, mm -hmm. A bit better than before. I mean, before, you need to go uh, to the office by more or less this time, leave the office at this time. So now you can, I can at this better sometimes organize my schedule with work more, I mean, on the morning, and then have a bit longer break during uh, lunch, for example, if I need to run some courses or something like that. And uh, in the afternoon, I uh, manage a bit on uh, as needed, including uh, the night. Nice. So more for flexibility in your personal schedule and work exactly. schedule, basically. Yeah. Nice. We have uh, Snehal in the in the talk too, who hasn't talked today yet. Okay. What yeah. about you, Snehal? <laughs> okay. So for me, the biggest thing which changed in my life was taking control of my time because it was so difficult like you have to manage a toddler manage a family you know work uh, you know send them to school bring them back have uh, what do you say meetings all the day and you know like work on you know other things but i think with your choice it becomes like literally very easy because i can you know put my personal and my professional things on the calendar and I can manage my time in much better way and also like the flexibility which you get with it like I have enough time to exercise every day um, eat healthy and uh, you know pick up new hobbies like I picked up um, a, what do you say gardening so basically I have like a mini garden where I'm growing vegetables so it was like a lot of fun um, and I think like uh, Having flexibility for your time is like really uh, valuable. And, you know, I would be glad that we have this kind of a program. <laughs> nice. Gardening sounds cool, actually. Like it's, it's kind of hard to do it at the office, right? You can try, but <laughs> don't know how you yeah, work out. I, yeah. yeah, I grow my own cucumbers and eggplants and cilantro there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And now everything's connected, right? Like family, family cooking that Manoj was mentioning earlier, then you have it all in one box here. That's perfect. <laughs> nice. Thank you, Snehal. Mustafa, do you want to get a, a take on this one? I mean, we all know you moved to Hokkaido already, but uh, maybe maybe you can talk about the thing it changed back when you were in Tokyo. Right. I just want to mention, like, when, when initially, when in, uh, like, when you think about moving to the countryside, the first thing like people say, like in the countryside, there are no opportunities. If you want like professional opportunity, then you need to go to the big city. And this like by itself, like your choice gives you the opportunity to have a big opportunity to work at the company like Mercury, but at the same time to be in the countryside, which is, if you think about it, like it's like, it's unthinkable like a few years ago. So. And then this is something that is changing the world, like the inflection point in the whole like world where, and from that point, things changed. And then this is now possible. And yeah, uh, Tokyo, uh, completely different lifestyle. I, I feel like I, I, I changed countries, not just like, I, okay. I feel I'm in a different country, different world, like everything is so much better. It's like night a day for me, at least for my personal life, yeah. Nice. And now you're in Hokkaido, you get to eat good food and ski every day. Yes. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah, definitely changed a lot for me too, actually. Uh, like, first of all, family time, definitely same as you guys. Uh, just being able to, of course, when you're working, you're not, uh, you're working, right? You're focused, so you're not talking with uh, family members, uh, with my wife, for instance. But uh, uh, having lunch together is pretty nice, actually. Uh, being able to cook food, that you make is also pretty nice. 
I mean, you can make your lunchbox and bring it to the office, but it's not the same as, you know, cooking it and eating it right away. Another thing I noticed also was like meeting other friends, like friends living close by or working close by. You can just, you know, drop off for lunch, have lunch with them and come back. That's also pretty nice. And I was not able to do that as easily before. So definitely that's a, it's pretty nice. Yeah. Commute time too. I think this is an obvious one, but uh, yeah, no commute anymore. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Okay, let's move on to uh, next questions, maybe. Next slide. So now it's about, uh, yeah, how often do you come to the office? I know the answer for all of you, but let, let, let's ask. So let's start with uh, Anthony's the first on the list. So Anthony, how often do you come to the office? I try to go every, every week, a bit less now because uh, situation, uh, COVID cases are increasing, but. I try to go every week once mm. uh, to the office to see people there. Um, mm. My team mem members, probably nobody uh, go to the office because, <laughs> I mean, almost. We have one, one two person who go into office often, but uh, we have someone from Brazil and someone else from Fukuoka. Mm. So it's a bit more difficult for them to go to office. Right, 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 definitely, yeah. Uh -huh. And so did you notice any change when you switch to uh, your chores and everybody's free to do whatever they want uh, in the team in any change like of any sort? It can be productivity, it can be just you know happiness, this kind of thing, anything. Well, I think it depends a lot on people. Uh, I think lot, my team, a lot of people, members enjoy to, uh, to work remotely. But they, some people had some concerns around the activities you can do in mm. office. For example, you know, uh, you work all the day and then say, okay, let's take a beer, let's drink a beer or something like that. Mm. Now it's happened a bit less. So some people mm. are a bit sad around this. So they try to <laughs> come up and go to office for this kind of special occasion, but right. it's a bit harder. Yeah. Right, right, right. That's true. Mm. Okay. Snehal, what about you? Mm. Very rarely, I would say. <laughs> I mean, I went to office just once a year, so it's, <laughs> it's like rarely I go to office. But uh, oh. in terms of team members, I um, it's up to them because it's your choice. So I never force them or anybody mm. to go to office or anything. If they feel like having a change in environment, they often go to office. Some people working, you know, like from home. So mm. I would say, like, it's pretty flexible. Mm. And um, in terms of changing working environment, um, I think, like, uh, you know, previously with work from home, like when it was like lockdown and all the situation, everybody was asked to work from home. So it was like a little bit difficult uh, for people to work from home and still have that kind of bonding with the team members or because as you know that, you know, some people stay with the family, so you have people to talk to, but when you are like, you know, single, it's very hard to, you know, like talk to people. So some are, uh, you know, we started noticing that, uh, you know, people want to gather as a group in the office, sometime to talk, sometimes to have that kind of a, you know, like one-to-one -one conversation, like coffee side talks. So I think it's, it depends upon, you know, people to people, what they want. But I think like with your choice, it didn't force anybody to like compulsory go to office or to compulsory stay at home. So it was like pretty much flexible for everyone and they can choose what they want to. So I would say like freedom <laughs> as mm. the biggest keyword, like what changed in the working environment. Nice, nice. It's good. Manoj, what about you? Your uh, opinion is very important because you're, you know, the only one who's not a manager here so <laughs> okay so i usually never go to office unless i have something to do like maybe collecting a post from the office but mm -hmm. other than that i try to work from home uh, also i don't think i saw any negatives in that like most of nice. my members work from their homes so everything was okay for me nice nice so pretty smooth transition huh yeah okay okay thank you manoj uh mustafa i'm not asking you how often you come to the office i'm pretty sure it's quite low but uh i can ask you though if you notice any change in your in your team after after this switch right 
Yeah, actually, like my team is a little bit uh, different because we go to the office every Thursday. <laughs> so we have okay. a kind of a ritual that we go to the yeah. office every Thursday. Uh, of course, now it's not happening because of Omicron, but we used to go every Thursday. And then my plan is to go to the office twice, twice a week, uh, twice a month, okay. like uh, once okay, or twice thanks. a month. Yeah. Okay. The change in working environment after adoption of your choice. Uh, I mean, obviously, I had like a big change in the, the the whole environment for me. But for my team, I think like maybe like uh, maybe it, di it didn't change much. Yeah. Okay. Which is also very good. People are free, and it didn't impact anything, so it's pretty good. Mm. Right. Thanks, Mustafa. Okay, I think we're done for the panel discussion. I'm going to hand over the virtual mic that you cannot see to our main uh, MC. Thanks a lot for listening. And here he comes. <laughs> OK, thank you, Stefan. -san. I got your virtual MC uh, microphone now. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> and thank you again, everyone, for sharing your experience. So uh, we are moving on to the time for Q&A. And we are going to pick up questions from YouTube chat box. And we are still accepting questions or comments. So please type in if you have anything. Uh, any kind of question and comments are welcome. So let me see which one to pick first. Actually, I see one which looks quite interesting. And I'm going to show it over here. So it's from Marcus. Thanks for the question. Re remote team building. Uh, how do you avoid or deal with Zoom fatigue? And how do you encourage interactions such that they feel more organic? Hmm, this sounds quite specific and interesting, but is there anyone who's doing, uh, taking any means of unique? Uh, I here? think uh, Anthony just raised his hand. Okay, Anthony. He's taking out the okay, challenge. Anthony, yeah. Anthony. I will try. <laughs> I will try to solve first the second part. Uh, how, yeah, do you encourage interaction so that they feel more organic? I think this, uh, what we can talk about organic uh, interaction is belong a lot uh, how you know each other. When you are in office face to face, most of the time you, uh, if you have a common topics, a common interest, a common work, you will start discussing about it and have this kind of organic. And then later, when you uh, see again the same person, we have some topics and we start knowing each other. So when you are in a remote situation and you know nobody, you need to build this kind of same relationship between people. So that means at the beginning, for my opinion, we should focus on having team building where people can start knowing each other. What do you like? Uh, what is your passion? Uh, what you're doing, I don't know, next weekend or something like that. So then when you start having this kind of conversation, later when you do again and you meet the same person, we have some topic you can talk with them and maybe you can have some private uh, joke into team who can bring more this kind of organic and people will be used to it and will be easier to talk with each other. And about the first part, uh, this I'm not sure. I think they're too extreme. People with too many meetings and people with not a lot of meetings. So I think for people with too many meetings, probably we need to breathe a bit more the meetings and have some time to kind of uh, turn off and just, I don't know, go to drink something in the kitchen go to eat something or just exercise a bit, uh, 15 minutes and go back and say, okay, I have more energy now and I can continue. Yeah, this is my kind of some answers on this. Uh, I would like to take a take on this one. Uh, usually we use special chat. It's quite a nice tool. Like you can create your mini huddles and talk about like various topics. So at the same time, you can have a conversation about like what's the best place to visit or what's the good food to eat and those kind of things. And also like at some moments, we also tried some remote activities, like, you know, do something together. I, I remember Mustafa's team was practicing like warm up and exercise during standups and there were, there were events like we tried to play a virtual reality game together or do even sake tasting. We have tried that, like doing sake tasting online with the sake box delivered to each person. So it is quite interesting to bring that kind of organic relationship and know, you know, like other people in depth. 
Wow, that's a very unique way of uh, interacting with the teams. Like, I would definitely love to have those kind of sake box delivered <laughs> at my house. Like, <laughs> I love tasting sake. So, yeah, I would, I'm, I'll be in that. So, call me next time. <laughs> okay, so thank you everyone for the ideas. Maybe we can move on to the next question we have. Uh, how about this one? So, uh, what is the current situation of Mercari uh, percentage of remote workers versus office, especially among the developers? So, uh, regarding in general ways, uh, regarding the general um, uh, numbers, I think 90% of the engineers are working remote from home. But I guess this depends on the teams, like as Manoj, Manoj just mentioned, uh, some teams are meeting on a weekly basis, like on a fixed day. But maybe some people are diff working differently. So, is there any specific way of uh, meeting as a team, or like any specific uh, terms you guys are taking? Any idea? Yeah, that's a tough one. Mm, as much <laughs> as possible, like when possible, doing it hybrid is also pretty nice. Like some people like mm -hmm. to meet in the office. So we have, you know, cameras and mics in the office uh, or in meeting rooms, this kind of thing. So we can use that, for instance, like, let's say me and someone else, me and Maloj, just go to, uh, to we are in the same team, by the way, but uh, we go to, uh, to a meeting room and, and uh, we get food together, but we also, we are also online with others. I've done that, not with this team, but uh, I've done that. And it actually works out pretty well. Mm -hmm. That's one solution, I would say. I don't know, what about the mm. rest of you? You haven't tried hybrid? I'm, I'm doing hybrid. Uh, I mean, okay. not anymore, not this year, but uh, the previous year, I did it a bit uh, hybrid. Uh, I mean, going to office, just to meet people you're not used to work with. Mm. Mostly that. I mean, for example, Stu, uh, yeah. meeting him in the office, talk a bit, and say, oh, what's going on? These kind of things uh, used to do. And I think some people will really like to do that and looking for this kind of interaction, but not everybody. It depends. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, speaking of myself, uh, I actually, I'm in the engineering office and I've joined the Mercari group last year. But um, so, so far, um, our team has only been able to e-meet each other except on the the event occasion of the event which was uh, hack week which was uh, taking place last year's end so basic way of interaction is on the internet or like on the virtual side so it really it's kind of really dependent on the team as well and for mm -hmm. from our side like some people some teams uh, we have lots of occasion to interact with the teams the other teams which is not like uh directly related but like loosely coupled mm -hmm. so it's kind of interesting to know that what this team is doing like how these teams are cooperating or collaborating together so yeah and it's always like learning learning from each of you guys as well thank you very right, much and some teams for... some teams just meet for that right like there's there's one team that yeah, yeah. they do outside for instance and there's one team who they have members in remote locations and remote location outside of Tokyo, let's say uh, far away, like in Nagano, this kind of thing. And they would just do offsite where people come in and meet together to, to have this kind of parties. So that's also possible. Yeah. Okay. okay, so thank you for the question. Uh, maybe we can move on to another one. Maybe uh, let's see which one looks interesting. Hmm. Okay, uh, maybe maybe this is specifically for Mustafa-san, but let's see. Uh, There's another one from Marcus. Uh, <laughs> don't you miss the presence of Kombini everywhere, everywhere and variety <laughs> provided by Tokyo? Or what do you miss the most uh, in Tokyo? So I, I think this is for you, but how do you answer to this one? Yeah, actually, the, there's a special companies here in Hokkaido called Seiko Mart. 
So they kind of like uh, provide a different like uh, alternative. And yeah, of course, there's 7-Eleven and the other like Family Mart, all, all the other companies. But yeah, I mean, even it's funny because even, even in small towns in Hokkaido, company is still everywhere so <laughs> it's it's not 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 so much different it's still it's still everywhere like even in a small town so and uh, yeah of course like the variety provided in tokyo there i mean it's like it's a city with almost 40 million people so i can imagine like how much it's very there is there's variety but also the the the, the because there's not much variety here so there's there are many other like chances to like explore some other things as well. And what I miss the most about Tokyo, uh, so so far not so many because I'm still new here. But maybe I need some more time in Hokkaido to realize how much I, I will miss. So far, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> you Hokkaido lover here. <laughs> mm, I think everything is shiny. That's why. You know, snow everywhere. Oh, that's cool. yeah, yeah. Wait for the summer, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should go and visit Mustafa San's place at some point yeah. if if yes. time allows. <laughs> okay, so maybe one more question we can take. Uh, oh, how about this one? So this one is from Rohit San. Uh, so the question is, how do you onboard a newcomer who has no experience of software industry? Writing code in college is different than one in a big companies. Oh, OK, so maybe this one. Uh, well... I can answer. OK, can answer this. okay so for this one, um, because recently uh, one of my team onboarded like two interns who are working remotely from India. And, uh, you know, like when we are onboarding people or newcomer, at least in our organization, we use a couple of softwares and have daily meetings with them in terms of doing some kind of pair programming. So we use softwares like Tupu where, you know, you can work together and, you know, uh, work on a PR together, also try to understand the architecture of the code base and those kind of things. But apart from that, you can have like more, uh, open conversations on Slack, which is like pretty much convenient. Like if the newcomer or you know new joiner is stuck with any kind of problem, we try to you know encourage them to ask the questions on Slack, so we can you know stay with them in the chat. You have you know we also leverage on Huddle, which is uh, you know like a new feature which is added by Slack, where you can you know quickly dial in and talk about oh what do you think about this approach, and you know you can quickly drop out of the call. So. Uh, you can have those kind of casual conversations which we can have in the office, like, you know, staring in other people's screen or talking with them for some time and trying to understand, like, uh, you know, what should be the best way of implementing this. Uh, but if it, if it needs to be, like, more formalized, then you set up, like, a hangout meeting and, you know, you talk about the approaches. So I think there are multiple ways in which we do in the organization, but it depends upon team to team and people to people. Thank you for your share, sharing your experience over there. Uh, I'm pre actually this kind of fits with me as well. I previously was not from, from the uh, the software industries, but once I was in Mercury, I see lots of conversation openly going on in Slack, and yeah. that was kind of really uh, encouraged me to that, like communicate freely inside this platform. So, yeah, it's one of one type of culture that Mercury has, I guess. Okay. Okay, so let's see, the time is clicking, but maybe one more question is available. Okay, uh, there are lots of lots of questions and comments. Well, this is not really a question, but like a com nice comment from the audience. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. We you all look so happy and relaxed. That say a lot about American culture. <laughs> yeah, that is very. Uh, thank you for the comment. So, okay, maybe the time is clicking. So, maybe it, I think we should close the question by now. So, thank you everyone for presenting and sharing your experiences. And yeah, uh, I will finish the Q and A session over here.
Uh, sorry for the audience that we can answer all the questions, but the time is running, so we will end over here. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your questions and interests. OK, to the main slide, please. OK, thank you. So uh, now we are into closing the event. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining. I uh, hope you all enjoyed listening to the talk of our engineers and engineering managers' remote working experiences. So uh, a few notes to make before one last time. Next slide, please. So uh, it's the advertise. We are hiring. There are various positions available to engineers and engineering managers at Mercury. So please check from the QR code shown over here or search at careers.mercury.com. Next slide, please. And finally, your answer to the survey is much appreciated to improve our future events like this one. Uh, you can submit the form from uh, this QR code. Otherwise, we will share the link after the closing of the event. Next slide, please. OK, so that's all. Thank you once again for joining us. Uh, we hope that our talk was a fruitful one. And we will be very glad if this made you interested in Mercury's engineering organization. So thank you to all the presenters and the panel panelists as well. That's it for today. So see you again at our next event. Thank you very much.